So look what we got here, a new telescope. Now there's two things about this that's got me really excited. One uh, is that this telescope is actually um, for my wife. Uh, she's in expressed interest in getting into this hobby with me, so this is going to be a lot of fun. The other part is that this is a newly released uh, telescope from ASCAR, and it's my first ASCAR, so we'll take a quick look at this. Now, we've already unboxed it, uh, but I did put it back in the in the box just for uh, protection. Uh, so I'll do a sort of an unboxing, I guess. Uh, we do get a user guide in there. And then this piece over here, these are the different uh, adapters. And I've already removed the plastic from the scope, so I'll get the scope out now. And there it is. So this is a 65 millimeter quintuplet. Uh, 416 millimeter focal length, 65 millimeter aperture. Uh, it's a little bit on the slow side at f6.4, if I recall. Now, uh, specification-wise, it's very similar to my StellarView SV7AT, but there's one significant difference between the two scopes, other than the fact that this is a quintuplet with two uh, ED elements. Uh, it's that my SV7AT is really ideal for a micro four-thirds sensor, and you can run a crop sensor on that scope, but uh, that's that's actually pushing it. The stars in the corners are not the greatest, and uh, and that's it. Now this scope here is supposed to be able to handle a full frame. So how well will it do that? What will the stars look like in the corners? I don't know, um, but I'm hoping it'll be good. I've seen the reviews of other scopes in this PHQ line, and they've all been pretty good with uh, with full frame sensors uh, without the reducer. Reducer is available for this one, but I'm going to keep it native, at least for now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Initially, I'm going to use my ASI 533MC, just because it happens to be the <clears throat> only camera I have available. Uh, I am standing up a third rig uh, for this, so I'll have three telescopes out there. And um, But eventually, I'd like to get a full-frame uh, sensor. I mean, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I might just have to go with uh, with a crop size, but full frame is what I'm really interested in. Now I just want to show a couple other things that I thought were really cool about this scope. So, if you look at the focuser, that right there is awesome because that's going to make it easy to uh, rotate this camera. Um, with my other scopes I've gotten pretty good at uh, at doing that, uh oh, Mr. Thor, come on, buddy. Uh, at kind of guesstimating uh, how far to rotate, but uh, this will be really helpful. And it's not just for framing purposes. Like, if you've ever um, knocked a telescope, or sometimes you know everything is, uh, come on, buddy. Everything is, um, everything gets knocked and 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 unscrews a little bit, and then you try to screw it back. You don't always quite get it. I have my uh, software set up to uh, verify rotation within like a degree and a half so it doesn't take much to get the rotation off if anything shifts or if I have to do any kind of maintenance like clean filters or whatever so it's just really useful that if I have to adjust rotation by a few degrees that I'll be able to see this uh, with no problem and of course that color is pretty cool it's a limited edition. I, th I think only a hundred or fifty worldwide or something like that. And you know this color really uh, worked for my wife. <laughs> so, uh, Ascar, you guys should throw in this uh, pink or rose gold co rose gold color on more scopes in the future. All right. So that's all I got. Really short, quick intro to this scope. Uh, definitely going to get it in action very soon, so if you're interested in seeing more about the scope and how it performs, uh, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned. Clear skies.